So, hopefully today we'll find out if uh, all the hard work is paid off and that tent stays dry. Getting a little bit of rain here, uh, but the forecast is for more, so uh, I'm going to leave it out there for about 24 hours and uh, we'll see what happens. And that's the overnight tent, and uh, if, I, if I'm successful, then uh, I'll be dry. Uh, if I do pull up into a campground and just want to stay for the night, now, I, you might ask, why do I call that the overnight tent? That's because that tent goes up in five minutes. It takes me about five minutes to put that tent up. It's just two poles. One pole goes from that corner over to that corner on the back. And then my other pole goes from that corner over to that corner on the front. And, uh, and then, of course, you got the pole across the top. And then you do have some guidelines. You can stake it out, whether or not, you know, if you expect. And, but, I mean, if you're in there, I, a lot of times I don't even stake it out. But... Uh, doesn't take very long you got two ropes in the front one on each side another one on that side and two ropes in the back and that will lengthen that tent out and give you a little more room to sleep in but that'll be my home Woohoo! all right this is it this is what I've been waiting on we're gonna see if that tents dry when this is over with but I needed a, a nice pouring rain for a long period of time I'm hoping all my hard work's going to pay off and I'm not going to be wet in my overnight tent on this trip. That represents a couple days worth of work. Let's see what happens. Woohoo! So I feel like <laughs> deja vu. If you go way back in my videos, you'll see my videos on the Cabela's tent. Uh, then this is when I was coming back from Virginia on the first trip. And because uh, I didn't want to get wet and I got wet in this tent and I said, you know, so I bought a whole new tent while I was up in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I said, no way, no way I get wet on the way back. And I put that Cabela's tent up and I stuck it out behind my mom's shed in the backyard and I left it there until it rained and it rained and it rained. And I said, well, folks, this is the moment of truth and one of my most popular videos, as a matter of fact. So now we've seam sealed the hell out of this old 21 year old Bibbler tent and uh, it's just like with the Cabela's tent, the bombshell. The, the, by the way, that's the Alaskan guide uh, tent, uh, they probably, uh, probably out of stock now, who knows, uh, but this is it, this is the moment of truth. I mean, it poured down, it poured down, This no greater test I could have given this tent. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Now water's gonna drip off of the side here into, into the tent. So I'm gonna to try to just fold it down just a little bit here. Let me get the, the screen. And I'm just gonna stick the phone in. We're gonna find out. This is it. Well, we got a little water right there in the middle. A little drip there. Uh, that's it. That's pretty dry, but that does indicate to me Maybe I've got a seam seal up at the top. I mean, why, why is that water right there? That seems weird to me. Um, but for the most part, I mean, if you had to live in this thing in a pouring storm, you know, you're going to stay pretty dry. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam seal it one more time. We're going to throw some more on here and uh, that'll be it. But I mean, for the most part, I can live in this, you know, with a 20% chance of rain. See, there's a little drip over there. So I'm going to leave the tent right here. So it looks like I have to seam seal right here again because somehow it got down there. And then right here, which means it indicates it's right up here. So, all right. So I'm, I'm going to zip it back up. And uh, tomorrow when things dry out, we'll give it one more, one more seam seal and put this tent away. And I have my overnight tent good to go. And so we're... So let's just take a look. So that little drip in the middle, that would, I mean, it looks like it's pretty seam sealed right here. I don't see where it, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, well, you know what I'll do is I'll seam seal along these poles. I bet that's probably where it, uh, where it leaked. So you can see how that poles, cause it's an old tent, right? You see how that poles pushing up right there. So I'm going to seam seal right along here. Okay. So I'm going to do all the way along the poles. And, uh, and that should, uh, that'll be it for this tent. That's probably exactly where that water's coming from because when you, when you have a pole pushing up against the fabric like that, that water can seep through. And I didn't really, because I was just doing the seams. That's why it's called seam seal. Um, so just a little 
tent footnote. Uh, I have a feeling that this is it. This is probably where that water came from, right through right here. So we're going to seam seal that, and that'll be it. So we're good to go. Good to go with the overnight tent. 21 years old. This is what I'm talking about with tent camping. How many RVs do you know out there, 21 years old, that people are still using? I mean, there's quite a few. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you know, when you think about it, I mean, I've had a lot of use out of this tent over the years. And the thing, you know, the, the thing I like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have to have the, the million dollar pickup truck, you know, pulling the tent behind me. I mean, pulling the RV behind me to get up the mountain, you know, and then, and then I'm limited on where I can go and, you know, what type of camping I can do because, you know, there's a limited number of RV spaces in the, in the uh, national forest campgrounds. Nope. Nope. I can just drive right up the mountain now with that Toyota Prius Prime and all my videography equipment. Uh, you know with that huge battery in that vehicle and uh, and throw this tent up in one night uh, In five minutes get ready, you know, and then stake it out Maybe just a little bit. So I mean, let's just say 15 minutes probably take me to to get this thing up And then I got a home for the night if I'm just staying the night or if I get there late, okay, so You know, I, we've made tent videos and I've talked about all this in the past. Okay, you know You want your first night tent, you know, because you get there late, you know, I don't want to take the hour it's probably going to take me even longer now because I haven't put that uh, Cabela's tent up in quite some time. I mean, I got it down to about 45 minutes when I was working with it on a regular basis, but I haven't put it up in a year. So I gotta, I'll got to i have to pull out my directions. <laughs> and they're my directions, by the way, because I rewrote the directions for that tent and put them up on, on YouTube. And uh, and so, you know, I, it would take me an hour. Well, if you, if you get there late and you don't want to be setting up a tent in the dark, you know, so, you know, if I get there at six o'clock, man, I just want to throw a tent up for the night. And then the next day, you know, if I'm going to stay the week or whatever, then I'll put that Cabela's tent up and, uh, and this would be good. I mean, just think about it with two tents. Now I can just throw all my, my, uh, gear in here, you know, rather than keeping it all in the car, which is where I used to, what I used to have to do, you know, when you only got one tent, you know, you, you're keeping all your shit in the car and, uh, you know, and of course in the national forest, sometimes those campsites are way up on top of a hill, you know, so you're hiking up and down this, this slope with stairs to get to the car every time you need something, you know, this way I can just put this tent up beside the Cabela's tent and I uh, have all my stuff in here, you know, and then, and, and just use the Cabela's tent for, for reading a book or sleeping or, you know, whatever I want to keep in there. Um, you know, um, so you know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the advantages here, man. Multiple tents, multiple tents, and uh, and I love the, uh, the the versatility of being able to get to wherever I'm going, and you know, and and be able to camp wherever I want to camp. You know, sometimes I don't stay in a, a, a campground. You know, sometimes you just pull up in the national forest. You know, and you know what the hell, and you say, man, I'm tired. You know, I'm just gonna throw a tent up here on the side of the road, and you know, sleep here back in the woods. You know, screw it. You know, because in the national forest, you know, a lot of times you can you can just camp. Now the ranger's gonna roust you out. Sometimes they might. You know. But because you're supposed to get a, a a pass or whatever, but my, you know if you're only there one night, I mean catch me if you can, you know. I'm, <laughs> you know, I mean, as long as you got that car hidden pretty good, you know they're they're probably not going to bother you. And how do they how are they going to know you're not out day hiking, you know? So uh, you know how many times have you come back and seen a ranger at your car when you're out hiking in the national forest? I I, I don't ever see it, you know, unless it, I haven't paid some fee or something at a campground. So that's it, man. So. I guess the uh, lesson learned here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seam seal along the poles, uh, and that'll be it for this tent, and I'll put it away, and uh, we're good to go for the trip. Let's give the, uh, give the, the, the mantra, freedom, oh freedom, good to live in the Republican state of Florida, the free Republican state of Florida. We have no mask mandates. No jab requirements. We're free under the leadership of DeSantis.